Hey folks, Gwei. Recently, a friend shared with me an interview between Lauren Boebert, the uh, congressional representative from, from Colorado, and a radio show podcast host uh, author by the name of uh, Eric uh, Metaxas. Wild ride, this, this uh, interview. In it, however, th there's a couple of things that I, that I, I think it's important for us to address. I think it's important, especially for, for, for the Christians out there, to, to be aware of. One of the things, that, in, in the course of the interview, they're, they're talking about her success. And they're talking about the fact that really she, she uh, there's no reason why she should have won. And she's giving all the credit to God. Right? She's saying, you know, I didn't have the education, I didn't have the money, I didn't have the name, I didn't have the, you know, I didn't have the things that, that most uh, most politicians might have going into an election, and yet she, 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 she succeeded, right? She, she outlasted all of her primary opponents and then, and then won the election for her, for her seat. And what she says is, her success is a sign and a wonder to unbelievers. She throws this kind of language around quite a bit, and it seems like it's ramping up lately. But her success, she and her success, is a sign and a wonder to unbelievers. Now, the understanding being that people who are not believers in God would look at her and say, holy, wow, look at all the success, look at how she's, look at all that she's achieved despite all the things that were, that were against her. Look at all the ways she has become successful and powerful uh, despite the fact that she didn't have the things that a person may normally need to have this kind of, this level of success. There must be a God. There must be a God. She's following God. I need to follow that God because that God is going to give me that same level of success and power. I see evidence of God in her. I see evidence of God at work in her life, and I want to be in a relationship with that kind of God. But then Metaxas says something. He, he, he says something about, yeah, it seems like God really must be at work here. And I, because I, I get to see how you're always triggering people. I get to see how you're always triggering your opponents. It's a pleasure to watch or something along those lines. See, Metaxas actually throws water on her statement. Now listen, I'm certain that there are Christians out there who are supporters of hers and who can, through their theological understanding, see how God has been building her up into this place, how God has been knocking down the boundaries for this person to achieve what she's achieved that God has had a hand in it. But they're not unbelievers. The idea that our lives become a sign and a wonder to the unbelievers is, is about, well, it's about reaching out to people who don't have a faith. But the very fact that she spends so much of her time egging people on, twisting the knife, triggering her opponents means that her life is not a sign and a wonder to the unbelievers. In Canada, in the United States, the, her opponents, the side that she is so diligent in triggering, actually are the most unchurched demographic. That's the most unchurched side. That's the side of the political spectrum that would be less likely to hold her particular religious values and ideals. They would be people who would worship differently, if they worship at all. The people that she spends this time triggering are the unbelievers in her land. So 
She's not a sign and a wonder to them because all she's doing is getting their blood up. All she's doing is getting them upset. They're not looking at her going, oh my gosh, God did really wonderful things for her. If anything, they're looking at her and saying, I don't want anything to do with this God. If this God leads me to say these kinds of things and to do these kinds of things, I don't want anything to do with that God. The way she conducts herself in her work is not a sign and a wonder. It's a repellent. She's not drawing people closer to Christ. She's not drawing the unbelievers closer to Christ. She's giving the unbelievers reasons why they should reject any kind of relationship with Jesus Christ. She's giving them, she's giving the unbelievers every reason why they should refuse any kind of invitation that Christ may be offering to the unbeliever. This is a really important aspect of the Christian life. Jesus calls us to be a light on a hill. Be a beacon. Be something that people see in the darkness from a distance. Something that people want to gravitate to. We're to be comforting. We're to be sensitive, we're to be loving, we're to be nourishing, we're to be gentle. We're not to be fingers on a chalkboard. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray that the unbelievers will see us as a sign and a wonder, that they will, through us, see a God of love and mercy and compassion, that we will be the beacon that draws them closer, because in us, they see our love. They see our love for the world. They see our love for the people. They see our love for the community. They see our willingness to sacrifice all that we are for those around us. Pray that we will never be a repellent that leads people to dismiss and reject the invitation that is in front of them. Amen. Numultus.